All right, everybody. Welcome back to The View from the Mount, a podcast where we talk about real life issues through a biblical lens. I'm Matt, and as always, I've got Jason here with me. And for those of you who listened to our last episode, we kind of did like a greatest threats to the church countdown, and we compared notes on what we thought those might be. And one of those topics that came up was the topic of prayer and the lack of it in the church today. And we had so much to say about that even after we recorded the episode. We thought it deserved an episode of its own, and so that's kind of what we're going to be talking about today. Yeah, absolutely. You know, honestly, as we kind of go through this, part of it is just sharing our heart on, on this. We don't have prayer mastered. So like we're not coming trying to give a lesson on prayer that we've got figured out. Uh, for me personally, this has been uh, a, a constant struggle uh, with my personal prayer life. So want to dive into that, why that's important. So I'm speaking to myself yeah. with you as much as I am to anybody else, but I, I believe we need to address this topic. Yeah, I think it's super important topic to address in the church. We, we've kind of talked a little bit, you and I, uh, over the last year or two about some of these pillars sort of that the church stands on today um, and whether whether they're very solid in today's church or not. And prayer is most certainly one of those those pillars. Yeah, um, absolutely. One, It's one of the top. But, yeah. Well, in theory, it should be. Correct. Is right. it, though? Yeah, and, and I guess, you know, in terms of discussing a pillar, the, the question would be if, if it's not intact, if it's not solid, then what effect does that have on the yeah. church? And so uh, we're going to kind of talk a little bit maybe about personal prayer and then move into prayer in a corporate sense as, yeah. a, as, a, as families or as the body of Christ uh, altogether. And so we're going to kind of start into some personal prayer type questions. And so what, what do you have, Jason, that you'd like I, I to think, discuss first? I think the first thing really dive into is why is this so difficult? I really don't believe I'm the only dude in the church that struggles with personal prayer. Yeah, well, there's at least two of us because right. I, I definitely do as well. It, it seems like a universal conversation. Right, that, mm -hmm. that people relate to, almost everybody does. I I don't I I don't think there's ever a time where I'm gonna be like I've got that mastered. Right, I, I'm doing that well enough. Uh, there'd be there. I'd like to see growth mm -hmm. in my personal prayer routine. Uh, but man, I, really. So the question is this: Why is this such a difficult thing for individuals? I mean. I First and foremost, if you just want to get down to the most practical thing, I think time is an issue for us. You know, most of us, we hit the ground running. We've got a thousand things to do in a day and time to do half of those. Um, and I just think we put prayer off maybe with the thought that we're going to do it later on and never get to it. Or, or maybe it slips our mind altogether because we're just so busy that we, we don't want to take that time aside to just spend talking to God. And maybe it's telling that... We, we tend to see prayer as a waste of time yeah. or, or not the essential part of our time. We see it as the one thing that's negotiable. Right. And, well, and I think maybe our understanding of God goes into that. You know, I, I think we tend to tell ourselves probably, well, God understands that I've got this or that going on. And, you know, your kid doesn't understand that you can't give them your attention right this instant, whereas God does. And so it's easy for us to put him off. and. Obviously, that's not the correct thing for us to do. Now, there are days, though, for at least for me, there are days that go by and maybe I look back or reflect and I didn't even think about stopping to have yeah. a good time of prayer. I, I think I had casual times of communication uh, as situations arose throughout the day, but there are days that go by where I didn't even think about it. So it's not like I said, this should be a part of my schedule. I'm just going to replace it. Right. There's times I don't even consider putting it as a part of my routine. Yeah. And, and I think maybe a lot of us just spend all of our time reacting to things rather than planning ahead and, and setting priorities and saying these things are not negotiable. We just We just jump from reacting to one thing after another throughout the course of our day. And so we never get to prayer because what is it that prompts us to pray, you know, above and beyond those things that are in our face and, and screaming for our attention. Prayer is not one of those things that, that God's not going to snap his fingers in your face and right. say, hey, you know, to get your attention. And, and so many other things and people in our lives do exactly that. And so it's so, so easy to let it fall to the so background. If time, if time is one thing, Matt, what about, do you think that we're influenced, impacted in our idea of prayer, maybe by whatever our relationship might have been with our earthly fathers? 
How oh. does that impact our view of prayer? I'm sure that that has a huge amount to do with it, just in terms of the quality of our prayer. You know, what kind of conversation do you have with your heavenly father if you've never been able to have a healthy one with your earthly father? I yeah. mean, that really establishes our view of of what fathers are and our dynamic. And so I can see how if you you haven't had a good father in your life, that would definitely skew your your vision of what that should look like. Yeah, absolutely. That And, and that idea of our father mm -hmm. is the basis for our prayers. So if we're mixed up there, yeah. then we're going to struggle the whole, with the whole thing. Sure, because uh, it's all the fundamental parts, right? I mean, the trust, you're trusting God right. to care for you, that he has your best interest in mind, that you know he knows best, and so you're willing to put your will on the back burner for his. All those things, if, if you've had a father that you can't relate to in that way, that's very difficult for people. Yeah. I, I, I think always about that time, you know, when the disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray. Mm -hmm. And it's such an odd question because those guys had a Jewish background. They had heard prayers. I mean, they knew prayers. They had yeah. recited prayers. Prayer was... They had what, you know, multiple times a day they were praying as good Jewish boys. Yeah. And then they they must have heard Jesus pray. Right. And they I think the gist of it is not just teach us to pray, but teach us to pray like that. Yeah. And I don't know if you've ever heard somebody and you just listen to them pray and you're like, they've been there before. Oh, sure. I think that's one of the and we can we'll get into this when we touch on corporate prayer a little bit, but I think that's something that intimidates me to pray in front of others is because I've heard people pray that way. Right. Um, well, and, and that is one of the one of the difficulties, Matt. I think that we have this idea that prayer needs to be this ornate, flowy uh, language. And so what our corporate prayer might sound like might be very different from what our private personal prayer might sound like. It, uh, it, it might just be very different altogether. Yeah. So while I'm praying in front of an audience uh, for a crowd, with a crowd— uh, of people versus me pouring personally my heart out to God uh, in prayer. Uh, they might be totally different. And I think, you know, you mentioned our earthly fathers, but maybe most of us just really struggle with that intimacy, even with God. I mean, it's supposed to be this very personal thing. Uh, and, you know, we call him Abba, which is like Papa. It's this, it's intimate, close uh, term that we're supposed to use. And it, and it should be very personal. And yet he's not answering us, you know, audibly. We're not hearing God. And so it's a, it's a very yeah. one-sided conversation. And we're it's, speaking it's, to an unseen God. Right. And so maybe it's hard for us to hit that level of intimacy and closeness and communion with God that we're after when, you know, as far as our earthly senses are concerned, we're not getting any Feedback. So I was going to mention this later. Is is that indicative of uh, is prayerlessness indicative of a faith problem? So the only way I I know that God hears me, that my prayers aren't just hitting the walls or the ceiling, mm -hmm. is by faith. Yeah. So if I struggle to pray to an unseen God who's not answering me back, is that? Is, is the root, is the root maybe that there is a deeper faith problem? It could be. I mean, I, and I think that works more than one way. I think it could mean, like you're saying, that you don't have the faith to believe that prayer does any good. And then there's also the question of if we really believe the gospel and if we, if we believe what the scriptures tell us about God and how much he loves us, why don't we want to run to yeah. prayer? Why don't we right. desire to be there? Why does it work? R right. Uh, instead of a joy and a privilege and something that we look forward to in our day. And so either way you slice it, I think there's a faith issue there. Yeah, I think one of the, somebody had said something of the nature of, I have so much to do today. Mm -hmm. I have to spend a few hours in prayer. Wow. And, and I love that idea that that should be foundational. And you know, we'll come to some of the tips that we've learned that have, that have helped us. But but I, I think also, you know, the idea of what we maybe see on TV or in other places, whatever our experience is with broader religion, like this liturgical yeah. prayer or even this clergy system, that that's for these people, right. not for the common people. And I think all that goes in to make this difficult for, the, for, for most Christians. Yeah, I think you're right about that. And we struggle to make it a personal thing uh, that we each are responsible for. And, and I really do think that it, it just feeds into this lack of a relationship that we have with God. If you're never talking to God, how much of a relationship yeah. can there be? That's right. Um, this is the whole idea of prayer. If I was to teach on prayer, it's simple, but it's unnatural. 
Yeah. Like it's not, it's not like this really dynamic ornate thing that we've got a master to say the right words to come before God. So it, it, it's kind of simple, but yet it's profound and it is, I believe it's unnatural. Yeah. It, it might be in a way, but if you look at all these, I mean, look at all these pagan cultures. I mean, they would carve a thing to pray to. I mean, there, I think there's in us this, this crying out for help, from something greater than ourselves. And, and, you know, maybe we don't do that the way that we should, and we don't do it the way scripture outlines for us. But I think there is something innately in us that, that wants to call out to that higher I, power. I absolutely agree. I, I just mean like if the disciples say, Lord, teach us to pray, sure. that, that it's a learned thing. Yeah, I think, that, that, and and maybe, maybe there is a leadership dynamic that we're not teaching on it, but maybe as leaders, Matt, maybe mm -hmm. we're not doing a great job modeling. I don't mean corporate prayer. I mean, maybe we're not modeling personal prayer Yeah, because that, that is what Jesus did. He went off and had these personal private prayer times right. and the disciples watched him. And yet Jesus says, hey, when you go in to pray, pray in your own closet. He wasn't doing that for an audience or for a crowd, mm -hmm. but how awesome that they got to see the best prayer in practice right. praying. And so leadership, that is leadership. That's yeah. discipleship. And, and as we go through through this discussion, I think that, I think this kind of opens up into different spheres, right? You got that personal prayer life and that's going to grow into, I'm praying with my family and that's going to grow into, we're praying as a church. And Jesus had that, that all down, obviously. And like you're saying, they got to witness that. They got to wit witness person, I right. mean, you know, which I, you know, I'm, I'm, and maybe it's a moot point. I'm just meaning separating between corporate and private. Yeah, right. What, what they didn't observe Jesus having corporate prayer. Correct. They, they observed him having personal prayer. Yeah. Yeah, and, the and also intensity of that. Can you imagine the? Can you imagine no. seeing him in the garden, the the, mm. the the drops of blood? Which, by the way, that was his routine. Yeah, was going not that that level of intensity, but you know, going to a place that says as was his custom. Judas right. knew where to find him, and if Jesus needed it, I need it much more. Well, and look how I mean that kind of indicates that he used that as a source of peace and power and, you know, and strengthening for what he was about to do. He always went off and prayed just before he did something incredible. Right. right. I mean, so we don't, I don't think we look at it that way. We're just checking a box and we don't look at for, you know, I'm, I'm preparing myself for whatever God is wanting me to do. So I think, I think we would all agree, agree on the ideal that we would have a daily mm -hmm time of prayer. What we don't want, I, I think what we don't want is this to become mundane, right. ritual, that we're just checking off a box, but mm -hmm. yet we need it to be a box. We need it to be scheduled and planned. Yeah. Maybe there's something, I, I don't know what tips you might give that have, have helped with you, but one thing that I think, and we'll mention several back and forth, I, I think one of the things is it's a good first thing. Yeah. You know, the Psalms talk about when I rise or mm -hmm. when my feet hit the floor that early in the morning. Right. There's nothing wrong with praying at night, praying in the day, having multiple times of prayer. I think there's something to that being your first thing. Yeah, I think you're right. It gives God our first and our best attention. And also, you know, maybe as you go throughout the day, you're more apt to pray reactively to things that have happened that day. We're in the morning, you're fresh, you're giving God your attention and you're praying to God on his merits. And, and the other thing maybe is, you know, you talked about it shouldn't be some routine thing, but having a time when you pray can be helpful. There's something about we train our brains, you know, in a certain environment at a certain time, writers do this. You know, when you sit down at your desk at a certain time right. every day, your brain clicks over into same place. Now, now I'm writing, right? Same place, same time. Right. So for me, a lot of times that is my drive in to work, right? That's my main prayer time for the day. It's a dedicated chunk of time. I'm by myself. I can pray out loud without being public about it. And that that helps me because that's time that's otherwise wasted, right? We talked about we don't have time. Well, you got to drive to work. So maybe that's a good time. It has yeah. been for me. I, I, I think driving is a great time. For me, I found that there, there's something special in my prayer times when it's devoted to that. Yeah. And, and, and I know posture is not all it, that there is. You know, we can pray whatever the posture we have. But man, there's times where I've had these unscheduled mm -hmm. or like it's not like I'm doing it for the sake of doing it, but like face down, crying out to God. Yeah. There was some desperation. There was some intimacy mm -hmm. that that was there, and, and and there's something to that that I that I couldn't do driving. I'm a bad enough driver <laughs> as it is, so uh, doing that might cause enough trouble. Right.
And I think that that brings it back to the kind of relationship thing. If this is an out, outgrowth of our relationship with God, you're going to have those spontaneous times. And I think that's probably more closely resembling what real prayer ought to be. Yeah. And, and constant I wonder, communication, right? Constant communication yeah. with God. And also in line with that outgrowth of our walk with God, are we spending time in the word? Because that's going to prompt us to pray. Yeah. And, and I wonder, you know, we, we talked about the apostles got to overhear Jesus praying most likely, but maybe part of it was they observed in him something about God's character and it made right. them realize what we've been doing isn't prayer the way prayer ought to be. And the way we observe that obviously is in the scripture. And, and, and those go hand in hand, our Bible intake mm-hmm. and our, in our times of prayer. Sure. But oddly, I think people tend to get one or the other. Yeah. Getting both, like being really good at both. I think it, it takes training. Yeah. It takes intentionality. So like for me, you don't have to twist my arm to open up the Bible and, and to study. I, I, I like that type thing. But, yeah. but there's been many lessons, many sermons that I've preached that have not been adequately bathed in prayer. Yeah. Or, or they're, they're born out of a season of life where, where my, my prayer life is not, mm-hmm. not good. And so if prayer is the way we talk to God and the words, the way we hear from God, we need both. Yes. Yeah. And I think that maybe corrects a little bit what we talked about before. You know, we don't feel like God's answering us. And yet if we're getting the word, we're getting that answering part of the conversation. He's, yeah, he's communicating to us his will, but that does, it does present a little bit more of a time difficulty because now we're talking about, you know, we're having a hard time finding time to pray, but now we have to give prayer its proper time and then also give the scripture its proper time. And then ideally be kind of praying about what you're reading in the scripture. So that's so, some more so what prayer. Time is, what amount of time is adequate? I mean, what time, what amount of time do we, do we box off for prayer? I, it seems like coming up with a number just becomes yeah, silliness, right? It does. But, but at the same time, if this has not become a part of your life, it's probably a good strategy to get it in, right? To say, I'm going to pray for 10 minutes Correct. today. Um, I, and I think that's good advice is trying to, I, and I've done this before. I've been mm-hmm. like, I'm, I don't pray at all. I'm now going to have an hour and a half of prayer every day. Right. And, 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 uh, yeah, you burn yourself yeah, and, out. And then right away it's, it's not, you know, manageable, mm-hmm. uh, and it's overwhelming. So I, I agree starting with uh, something that's manageable is a good idea. Yeah. I also think, you know, kind of talking about some of the ideas that have helped helped us is accountability. Yeah. Tell somebody that you want them to ask you about your daily times of prayer. Right. And and ask them to hold your feet to the fire on it. Sure. And and I I know there are, you know, people who might say, well, that's supposed to be a private thing. You're supposed to pray in secret. Yeah, that's true. But the the point of that is that your motivation isn't telling someone you're praying so that they'll think, oh, how holy you are. We're not you're you're about asking announcing. for that. Correct. That accountability, one person you trust. And I think that's that's an excellent, excellent strategy. Nor do you, nor do you have to give them the details of that of, of no. that time of prayer. You know, we're talking about about that, you know, this is so much more than asking God for what we need. Yeah, this is a pouring out of our heart mm-hmm. to God, and uh, I think that's worth our time. And and I I don't think we ever should stop striving to grow in that. So maybe you start with ten minutes, but maybe your long vision of that, maybe your goal of yeah. that. So I, mean, I want to have a couple hours of of set aside prayer time. And, and I think, you know, you read scripture, it's very clear that God works through answered prayer to do things in the world. And, you know, I heard somebody mention, I don't remember who, but, you know, how many things haven't been done because no one prayed for them yeah. to be done. And and so if we're God's people, are we hindering the work of the kingdom because we're not praying? Yeah, um, yeah and, we are. Beyond personal stuff, like you said, it's not just about getting what we want, but, you know, it talks about in our lives that we ought to seek first the kingdom. I think that's also true in prayer. Yeah. We ought to be praying about kingdom stuff first. Right. And then if you have time, you know, oh, by the way, you know, here's what I need yeah, also. I, I think it's it's telling, like, the story of Daniel in the lion's den. You know, it's it, we've done disservice making this just a kid's story. Yeah. But prayer was a habit that he was willing to die for. Right. And nothing could be remotely said about most people I know. Most of the time, prayer is something that's, you know, replaceable within yeah. our schedules. You know, we wake up in the morning and we're too sleepy to pray. We go through the day and we're too busy to pray. And then we get to night and we're too tired to pray. Mm-hmm. I, I think it needs to be first things in, in terms of priority, whether it's the first thing on your schedule or not, but it needs to be a non-negotiable. And, and don't save it for the big stuff in life. Pray, pray about yeah. everything. Pray you know, when it's good. Pray, pray without ceasing. Yeah. And I, I think, I do think 
it's absolutely imperative that you have a devoted time. You're like, I'm just going to focus on God. and This is my time with God. But there is nothing wrong with, you know, having almost a running prayer going throughout your day. Where I, I And I've done that. And when my prayer life's been on point the way it should be for short stints of my life, I've prayed a lot. And it says, talks about pray without ceasing. And that doesn't mean you're literally doing nothing else. But like just all the time, I'd find myself kind of dipping back in to prayer and as things happen throughout the day or as I needed a little extra strength or just whatever, I think that's a really good thing. And it helps us to be mindful in every situation that God's with you. And I I find my behavior improves when I'm doing that. Absolutely. And there's that clear correlation. Mm -hmm. Uh, So Matt, if we switch just a little bit of uh, gears, just a little bit, personal prayer and corporate prayer go hand in hand. Yeah. You don't have one really without the other going well. Let's just say if we looked at the church that we read about in the book of acts yeah it's stunning how much a part of their dna prayer was right they were constantly getting together to do that and i just wonder you know a lot of times i don't i don't think those were likely scheduled things we're like let's get together wednesday for a prayer meeting i think they were hanging out and they were moved to pray about something or or something happened and their immediate response was let's get everybody together and pray about this right now i mean they they were They devoted themselves to prayer. So like in my observance in the church, I've been involved as the preacher of a church for 20 years. Yeah. And what I've seen is that corporate prayer, I'm talking about praying together as the body of Christ. Most of the time, that's the smallest aspect of our corporate gathering. Mm -hmm. The one that we're most willing to shrink or decrease. Yeah. And, you know, we kind of had historically like Wednesday night most places I think began as a, a prayer meeting. Yeah. It most places I know of has evolved either into small groups or Bible study. Yeah. Which is nothing wrong. Those are important aspects sure. of right, Christian right. life. But the idea of it being a prayer a, a meeting set aside for the purpose of just praying, that's lost most places. It is. And and I think if if we were doing it the way we we ought to be doing it as the church, it wouldn't necessarily be locked into a set meeting. We would be getting together, like like I said before, in response to different things or just because we felt like we ought to, that kind of thing. And and it's almost like you said, takes up a small portion of our time when we get together, a- almost to the point where I've gotten annoyed with people who are like, okay, they were asked to Long open us winded. with prayer. They've been going on for like 12 minutes. And yeah. to be fair, they're not always saying much, but you know, that's not a good attitude for me to have no. either. No, I, I think if you look through, uh, throughout the teaching on prayer in scripture, there's a corporate aspect wired into it yeah like even the model prayer right our father yeah, we right. Uh, forgive us of our debts you know so it's it is this idea of it's not forgive me it's not my father mm-hmm. although there's nothing wrong with that but there is this intended idea of this being together yeah as the body right and i think that's really powerful you know you look at talked about the first century church well what was going on while they were devoted to prayer i mean the church was sweeping across the whole world even on the wings of persecution. And I think there were a lot of factors there. Obviously, God was establishing his church. There was a lot going on. But to say that prayer was not one of those factors, I think, would be foolish. No, I mean, I don't think it's even fair to say it was just one of them. It was top line. Yeah, It wasn't just incidental. I think that's the difference. Prayer wasn't incidental. And it wasn't just something that was born out of, hey, we got a sick person. Let's pray. Right. I'm sure they did that. But most of the time when I've seen special prayer meetings as the church, it's been born out of somebody in the church is sick. Right. has cancer. Let's pray for him. By all means, don't stop doing that. Sure. But it, it seems like these were bigger kingdom things that urged on prayer meeting. It was in the book of Acts. Peter and John are arrested. Yeah. Uh, they have a prayer meeting. How are we going to handle the threat of being told not to preach the gospel when we've been told by yeah. Jesus to preach the gospel? And the prayer, the corporate prayer was for boldness. Yeah. And then it says that they together, they, 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 they in a unified way went and preached more boldly. Yeah. I I always thought that was interesting that they don't ask for a change in circumstance. They don't ask for God to lessen that trial at all. It's just make us bold, give us courage, help us step out, you know, in the midst of this, that's, that's indicative of a totally different attitude than we have. Because, because I, I think even if we got together more as the church to pray at those times, our focus would naturally be 
God take away this trial or ease sure. the burden of it. And, well, I mean, we see this in on our prayer list. So if I'm leading a, a time of prayer mm-hmm. and I'm, anybody have anything we need to pray about, maybe that's the first I- issue altogether. But I bet 9.8 out of 10 of the things oh, that sure. are mentioned are these physical ailments that matter. Yeah. It, it, it's not that I just, when you read through the New Testament about the church praying or individuals praying mm-hmm. or Paul giving prayer requests, uh, to churches, I can't. I can't think of how few times a physical ailment was the subject of the prayer. Yeah, Paul talks about praying personally for whatever the thorn in his flesh was, but uh, there's no indication that 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 was a corporate prayer concern. Those types of things. Oh, I think oh. you're right. Um, and and just like you said, we, we, and are, are we we're not even sure that was a a physical ailment. correct. It might not have been. It could have been um, a, a spiritual. But whatever it was, it was some personal thing he struggled with. And, sure. And it wasn't a kingdom issue, and so it didn't seem like it came up corporately. I don't know. You're, you're making a face like you somewhat disagree. I, Go ahead. I mean, I I guess I think anything anything that would hinder Paul from going on mission trips was a kingdom issue. Anything that would slow down his work as the with the spread of the gospel was a kingdom issue. So whatever that this was, heard lots of ideas. This isn't what the, we're going off off the rails. <laughs> it's your fault. And and but whatever the the issue was 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 enough that Paul asked for it to be removed. And uh, you know he described it as a messenger of Satan sent to torment him. Mm-hmm. And so uh, I, th- I think there was there, there's a there's a case in which our physical ailments can be kingdom issues. They can. So like if I'm you know a missionary traveling around the world and I'm hampered from doing that, that is a, a kingdom issue. I suppose so. I, I would I would contend that God obviously used Paul for what He wanted to use of. him for. So it must not have. And and that's a good I think that's a good point to actually kind of bring out. Sometimes what we think needs right. to happen. For the kingdom, you know, we, we got these good rationalizations. God, do this because it'll be better for your kingdom. Maybe we're wrong about that. Uh, I think that might be the point. Uh, and, and God doesn't need you or me uh, in that sense. Your kingdom's bigger than me. Right. And the kingdom's bigger than you. And God uses us in spite of us. All, right. all those things are, are, are certainly certainly true. Yeah. And we can't doubt, you know, that if the church is together praying corporately, uh, not not just our, our own congregation, but across the world, yeah. that's going to move our society. God's going to be at work through that. And even, even worldly stuff, you know, we look back in history. I'm sure when like the Cuban Missile Crisis was unfolding, there were people getting together to pray about yeah. that. And yet today there's crisis after crisis. You can't turn on the news without getting the daylight scared out of you. And how often have you been called up to say, hey, we're getting together to pray about this. That's okay, so, the so if we're writing a church growth book, right, and we're just about what can you do for your church to grow? Mm-hmm. Or say we're talking about how can we emulate the church in the book of Acts because they're explosive growth, said that's the model. Point number one would have to be prayer. It would. And, and what are we praying for? I think that needs to be taught. You know, it, it could be so simple to start out with, you know, we get together, let's pray for boldness in our current circumstance. Let's pray for the church to grow. You know, let's pray for workers to go out, you know, to the harvest. Those are simple things that we can be praying for that are kingdom focused. So one of our mantras has always been, let's restore the church to the first century church. Mm -hmm. That's kind of been something we, and we've talked specifically about restoring New Testament doctrines that that have been lost throughout history or whatever else due, due to heresy. Maybe, maybe just maybe that we can't talk about restoring the New Testament church till we restore prayer yeah. As a centerpiece to the church. Right. Because I think what we see a lot of times is we talk about let's restore the church and then we roll up our sleeves and try to do it ourselves. And we're not bathing it yeah. in prayer. Um, and that's true of you mentioned preparing lessons and sermons or, you know, I've I've started whole ministries that I've not bathed in prayer the way I should. And then yeah. I get frustrated that they're not doing what I think they ought to do. Yeah. And, and I don't even know if that's what God wants done. I'm not, I'm not seeking his will. I'm not praying over it. And I think we really fall short in those areas as, as a church and also as individuals. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I'm, you know, I'm really under conviction that we need, and this starts from the corporate prayer and personal prayer. I think the start from the top down, you know, is, is now I don't know prayer is much more than a program, but it does need to be, if it's important, it does need to be wired into our strategy and our programming yeah. Uh, whether that means there's specific prayer ministries or things that we're doing to facilitate corporate prayer and 
private prayer yeah. as the leadership. Well, and I think it starts, like I said, it starts at one point and kind of gravitates outward from there. So our leaders in the church at large need to have their own prayer lives uh, right. to be deep and, and developing, and then also get together as the leadership and pray. I mean, how many eldership meetings turn into, you know, what color tablecloths we're going to have at the picnic, or it's just this business stuff. And yet you don't, aside from an opening prayer, you don't spend the whole meeting praying about yeah, I think kingdom stuff. I think one of, one of Jesus's indictments uh, against the Pharisees and the scribes was that they, they teach, but then they don't do. And, and what he prompts us to do is to do yeah. these things and teach others to do them. And so the doing ourselves has to come and then we teach others to do it. And that is going to give weight to what we're teaching because well, they see that rock solid prayer life in you. And so when you teach them, it's so, going to do something. So if we gave a snapshot of what a church looks like, that prayer is central, we're talking about corporate. Mm -hmm. What does that look like? How is that seen in a corporate? And there's more than one right answer to that. But what does that look like? You have some examples of what might happen if the church is corporately devoted to prayer? I mean, for one thing, I think you're going to see the church growing and not, not just num numerically, but you're going to see a deepening, I think, of, of our faith. Oftentimes, our our pews are half filled with people who are very superficial in their faith. They don't have a much un, much of an understanding of, of biblical things. I think that immediately starts to deepen. You get together and begin to pray together earnestly and regularly. I think you're going to see a deepening of your own people. And I think that deepening is going to naturally result in you pulling in new people. Well, isn't there something special about the people that you've prayed with? Mm -hmm. There's there's a bond. Yeah, that's a really good You point. know, like like— I don't know if you've had, I know you have had times where something's going on in your life and somebody stopped and prayed with you. Yeah. There's something about that right. that strengthens that bond mm -hmm. because you've been in the trenches in prayer together. So I, I wonder if we're not, you know, we're storming the gates of hell in prayer, uh, you know, in, in that sense. I, I wonder if, you know, maybe it creates unity. Yeah. As well. I think that's a really good point. And it helps us to know when you when you pray with people, you learn what's on their hearts and you, yeah. you learn how to pray for them better, even in your own personal prayer time, uh, because you know the things that are that are a struggle for them. And and also just like so much else that we do here at when we meet together, it ought to be preparation for what we do in the world. So you gain that familiarity and that depth in your prayer life here. You're gonna carry that out and and be willing to pray for that cashier at the supermarket or you know, the guy that you meet alongside the road or just whatever right. the case, you're going to have that confidence, not only in your, in your uh, ability to pray without sounding like an idiot, but right. But I mean, also in that God answers prayer and that it's powerful sure. and, it, and it matters. And, and I think that that's really, really important as for us to build one another up in that way. So much of what I learned about how my prayers should sound was learned by observing in corporate settings. Yeah. You know, when uh, we would early on, I wasn't didn't grow up in the church, but we would gather specifically to pray. Yeah, and I remember listening to more seasoned Christians, listening to them pray and mimicking mm -hmm. their tone, their mannerisms, their 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 sayings, and, and kind of learned a lot about that. I think that prayer's caught as much as it's taught. Yeah, and I think one way to teach to bring people along is we have these times of corporate prayer, prayer and they get to hear these godly people praying. Right. And there are people I listen to pray, and I'm like, man, I want to I want to pray like that. Right. And there's something to that. I, I, in Acts 12, is what a great example that is of corporate prayer, right? Peter uh, was in prison. They mm -hmm. think he's going to be put to death in the church. It says, but the church was earnestly praying on his behalf. Right. But the church, you know, the, the world intended to put him to death, but the church, it wasn't right. that they were doing nothing. Yeah. They were, they gathered together to pray for this key moment in the church's history. Yeah. And I love that. And I, I think the world has accomplished some huge goals simply because the church was not praying against those things uh, or for God to do something. I agree. And, and, you know, in terms of, you mentioned you get to listen to these people pray, and I think that's a really fantastic example, and that can teach us a lot of things. Uh, on the other side of that, I have caught myself, you know, when I'm called to pray in front of a crowd of people, I'm almost spending as much attention 
trying to sound a certain way as I am to actually talk into God. And I think we, we want to be careful not to fall into that trap. Be simple and sincere before you're flowery and, and empty when you're yeah. praying in front of people. Yeah, as an overflow of the heart. Yeah. The and mouth's going to speak. Right, because those deep prayers are going to come from a deepening of your walk. I mean, that's naturally going to develop. I think if we focus on being sincere and, and really trying to connect with God in that moment, it's okay for your prayer to be simple. It doesn't have to be flowery and fancy and polished. Yep. Absolutely. So maybe one of the challenges is something like this, you know, at least on a corporate setting, if you're in leadership, find and organize nights of prayer. Yeah. You know, uh, whether that be in your Wednesday night, cancel the <laughs> the Bible study aspect of, of, of that gathering or, or make it another night. And say, hey, we're going to gather together. We're going to get in a circle. We're good. We're not going to do anything, but we're just going to pray for an hour, two hours, whatever it is. Yeah. I, you know, I, I would kind of caution, don't add a meal to that. Every, every, yeah, prayer, right. every prayer gathering I've ever seen in a church has been stolen by something else good. Right. So like, have you ever seen like men's prayer breakfast? Right. So it starts out as a men's prayer breakfast. Well, there's prayer and a breakfast, and then it yeah. becomes a breakfast, and then there happens to be a prayer over the breakfast. Right. And and it gets stolen. You know, I think prayer meetings on Wednesday night. It started as a prayer meeting with a devotional Bible thought, right. and then it, it got kind of switched around. Those things aren't bad; yeah. they're good. But why is the prayer meeting in the church the weakest of all of our meetings? It's the most poorly attended of all meetings because people aren't praying in their own lives. And so, to, and I think there's. There's some different factors there, right? Here's one I've heard, anxiety. I, I know people who absolutely would outright refuse to come to a prayer meeting because they're scared to death they'd be called on to pray in front of everyone. And, and they feel stupid yeah. and they feel uncomfortable and they don't want to do it. And, you know, like so many other things, it seems like so many people now struggle with feeling awkward and social anxiety and these things that, and I'm not saying those aren't real struggles for people, but we allow those things to keep us from praying together as the church. And I, I think that we need to, develop those things. And so maybe starting small, you know, like you're saying as leaders, invite three or four people over or, or whatever and say, hey, we're just going to pray this evening and maybe keep the time short, do a half hour. These people aren't accustomed to praying for long periods of time, maybe. Right. And so that's going to seem long to them. And if we're training individuals in these small groups, that's going to make a, a better transition into a larger prayer meeting. It's frustrating as a leader to say, well, prayer meetings don't do well. And if we just tried to schedule one, it would be poorly attended. But I think we've let this go so long as the church, we have to go back to basics and do some groundwork to reestablish that. I agree. And, and I think it has to start with our leadership. Yeah, sure. If if we're not doing it, then, you know, then we can't ask others to do it. And, you know, I, we have, we're blessed with godly, godly leaders that that's not the issue. I think all of our leaders though would agree mm -hmm. that one thing that we should do together more is pray more, sure. uh, business less, pray more. And I, I think, I think it does start from the top down. Uh, maybe it does start in your leadership meetings. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it does. And, and maybe some of those tasks, and I, I know tasks need done. I know the business needs handling, but you know, when Jesus taught them to pray, he taught about give us this day, our daily bread. He, he talks about seek the kingdom first and these things will be added to you. Maybe we need to trust God more that if we don't ask him for every specific thing, he's going to, he's still going to handle, it. he knows what needs done. Right. Right. And, and I think if we spend that time really devoted to prayer, the church isn't going to suffer because we didn't make a, a couple of normal day to day decisions at that moment. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I think that's, uh, I think that's about it for yeah. uh, what we've got, unless you've got something else, you got something I else? do not. I think we'll definitely circle back to this later. And hopefully if, if we are, you know, living by our own convictions, we'll have a little more to say about it because we will have tried so. to develop this some more. Well, I don't think, like I said, I don't think we ever got this mastered. Sure. I want to pray. I want to be known as a man of prayer. I want that to be so natural. So a part of who I am, yeah. but not, I don't want it to be a constant to always come back every year and be like, I'm struggling struggling in prayer. I'm struggling in prayer. I want to actually do better in prayer. Right. And I think if you're, if you're listening to this and this is a frustration that, that you're seeing in your own church, you know, maybe it, maybe it starts with you. So, so that's maybe the challenge for this. Start to develop your own prayer life even if it's starting small, make that a priority in your life and then expand that to your family. I'm going to pray with my family. It's going to be weird. It's going to feel awkward at right. first, 
you're going to be all thumbs and everybody's going to be a little uncomfortable, but you'll get more comfortable with it. I agree. And, and, and from that, you know, you start to in include other people in that prayer and it grows from there. And so if this is a change that you would like to see in your church, maybe you need to be that change. And, you know, while you're, while you're seeking to make those, those changes, maybe pray about it. That's a good plan. I All think, right. I think that's a good strategy. I think it is. All right. Well, I think we're going to go ahead and leave it there. We will catch you all in a couple of weeks. Uh, please be sure to click like or subscribe on whatever you're listening to. You can find our podcast on our website, which is lakemountchurchofchrist.org, and there's lots of other sermons and resources on there. Uh, we're also on Audible, Amazon Podcasts, iTunes, Spotify, a bunch of stuff. So wherever you're at, comment, click like, share. Um, please share this with other people and be praying for us that we can accomplish something with this podcast as we go forward. Thanks so much, everybody, for listening. We'll catch you next time. Mm -hmm.